what is a variable it is something that varies that can take any value and a variable can be of two types categorical and numerical categorical variables can be nominal ordinal dichotomous or binary numerical variables can be discrete or continuous here are some examples blood group it is a categorical variable it can be a b a b positive a negative b negative and it is nominal there is no order there is no grading it's not that having blood group a is better than having blood group b or vice versa disease severity mild moderate severe it is also a categorical variable but there is an order that's why it is called ordinal variable did you pass the exam yes no it is a dichotomous variable it is a binary variable is it a male or female it is a dichotomous variable blood pressure it is a continuous variable how many people are there in the room it is a discrete variable it has to be one two three but for blood pressure you can have decimal points that's why it is continuous here is another very beautiful representation of different types of variables in a picture form so you can see the different types of categorical variables binary ordinal and nominal eye color discrete counting numbers measuring weight it is a continuous variable now if it is a categorical variable you can present it as a proportion or percentage you can present it in pie chart but not for ordinal variables you can use by bar chart and even more if it is a numerical variable you can measure you can present it as a measure of central tendency measure of dispersion especially for continuous variables histogram bar chart box plot line graph and even more now variables can also be classified in a different way when we are looking at an exposure and outcome relationship they can be dependent or independent variables dependent variables are in which we expect to observe a change this is the outcome variable or the endpoint and it depends on the value of other variables and independent variables they can potentially cause a change in the value of another variable which is the dependent variable and the value of the independent variable are independent of other variables but the value of the dependent variables are actually dependent on the values of the independent variables so the independent variables can explain or influence the outcome these are the explanatory variables predictors risk factors exposures some examples for example if you're looking at a treatment or intervention in population you're actually look, looking at what is the effect of the intervention which is the independent variable on the outcome which is the dependent variable prognosis how well the disease is prognosing like is it going getting better or is it getting worse and it can depend on different conditions like if you are overweight maybe you have increased risk of something an outcome causation etiology does this exposure cause or increase risk of this outcome now let's discuss about study hypothesis i'm sure you know what i'm going to talk about now wearing face mask reduces covid-19 occurrence this is a hypothesis and assumption that we are actually going to test through our study so wearing face mask and covid-19 occurrence are two variables for which a relationship is stated in this hypothesis 
face mask is independent variable covid 19 is dependent variable so what are the hypotheses here null hypothesis is when there is no association incidence of covid 19 is similar in people who wear face masks and who do not there is no difference between the two groups alternate hypothesis incidence of covid 19 is different in people who wear face masks and who do not now what is a p value the p value is defined as the probability under the assumption of no effect or no difference null hypothesis of obtaining a result or equal to equal to or more extreme than what was actually observed or it the p stands for the probability and it measures how likely it is that any observed difference between groups is due to chance or if i say it in a more simple word how likely it is that we say that there is a difference but actually there is no difference that probability is called the p value and if we go back to our example of wearing face masks and transmission of covid 19 the null hypothesis or no difference is that wearing face mask does not reduce the transmission of face mask of covid 19 now if our studies is is saying that yes there is a difference what is the probability that we from our study are saying that there is a difference when actually there is no difference in covid 19 transmission from wearing face mask that probability is p value and the smaller is that probability the better that means we are more likely to going to tell the truth that is, it is more likely that us saying that there is a difference is actually true, that there is a difference. Now, there are some fallacies of p-values, and we measured these p-values through hypothesis testing. And failure to reject null hypothesis leads to its acceptance. It is a kind of, like when, no, it is not true. When you, you fail to reject null hypothesis, it means that there is insufficient evidence to reject it. We use an arbitrary 0.05 cutoff for p-values, but this is just an arbitrary, which was actually proposed by R.A. Fisher. Small p-value indicates large effects. No, we are not looking at strength of association. We are just looking at presence or absence of association. Statistical significance implies clinical importance. No. Clinically significant difference is something different than having a statistically significant difference. Having half a paracetamol might even reduce your headache, which can be found statistically significant, but that may not be clinically significant. That may not give you the comfort that we you were looking at you are looking for now how to test a hypothesis it depends on firstly whether the variables the measurements are dependent or independent in this case we are assuming that there is no dependencies okay when dependency happens for example if it is a repeated measure. I'm measuring my body weight now and I'm doing the same after two months. So the two measurements are actually dependent on each other because they're both my body weight. So if I had body weight, up, I was heavy at the beginning, it is more, it is likely that I'd be also heavier at the end. But if someone was lean and thin, that person would have given a body weight after two months, which would be less. So those two measurements are dependent, but in also in many studies we deal with independent variables or measurements so if it is an independent variable or measurement in that case the first thing that we'll need to decide is whether it is categorical or continuous both dependent and independent variables now 
The next question is, if it is categorical, how many categories, two or three? If it is continuous, both dependent and independent variables, are they normally distributed or they are not normally distributed? If they are not normally distributed, can they be transformable so that we can make them normal again? And then if you think about descriptive statistics, if it is a categorical variable, you're looking at percentages among the dependent variables or outcome variables. If it is a continuous variable, normally distributed, you look for mean and standard deviation. If it is not normally distributed, but you can transpose it to a normal distribution, then you can again look at mean and standard deviation, but otherwise, it is better to use median and minimum and maximum or interquartile range. Okay. Now, some basic statistical tests for hypothesis testing to determine whether there is a difference between the two groups or not. What is the p-value? Okay. For categorical outcome variables, we'll be using chi-squared tests. Okay, for continuous and normally distributed outcome variables, we'll be using t-tests, independent sample t-tests or student's t-test. And if it is not normally distributed, we'll be using Mann-Whitney u-tests. And we are all we are doing all these tests when the dependent variable ha is categorical and it has got two categories. We are comparing between two groups. How about the independent variable has three or more groups and the outcome variable is categorical, we'll still go with chi-squared test. Outcome variable is continuous, normally distributed, we'll go for ANOVA in in instead of t-test. We'll be go for analysis of variance. And for non not normally distributed continuous variables, instead of Mann-Whitney U-test, we'll be doing Kruskal-Wallis test when we are comparing three between three or more groups. How about the independent variables are also continuous? Then if it is the outcome variables are categorical, we might go for t-test and ANOVA. If the outcome variables are also continuous and the independent variables are also continuous and they both are normally distributed, we'll go for Pearson's test. We'll calculate Pearson's R. If both are not normally distributed, we'll go for Spearman's rank correlation. So we're looking at correlation when both the dependent and independent variables are continuous variables. When the variables are not independent, but the dependent, like I measured, talked about body weight, your body weight measuring at two time points. Those two measurements are dependent on each other. In that case, if the outcome variable is categorical, we'll not be doing chi-square test, we'll be doing McNamara's test. If the outcome variable is continuous, normally distributed, and we are comparing between two groups, instead of doing t-test, we'll be doing pair t-test. If the outcome variable is not normally distributed, we are comparing between two groups. We will be doing Wilcoxon, Wilcoxon signed rank test. So, and also when you will be comparing between more than two groups, comparing uh, means, instead of doing ANOVA, we will be doing repeated ANOVA. So you can see that the tests change when we are dealing with dependent variables.